So in this video, I'll be showing my 2019 TBR list. I have compiled a stack of 13 books that I am most eager to share with you guys. These books are the books that I have the most anticipation for in reading for the year 2019. Now, some of these books I have just pulled off of both of my bookshelves. Um, I do tend to collect books, so I don't always get around to reading them, and I still continue to purchase and purchase. I know it's a problem. I'm, I'm trying to work through minimalism, but books are really special to me, and I just love collecting them. Um, but anyways, I have pulled some of the books that I've purchased that have been just collecting dust on my bookshelf, so I'm going to be reading those next year. And also some of these books have been gifted to me. Um, one of them was actually an early Christmas present from one of my best friends. So shout out Patrick. I love you. And um, yeah, some of these have been recently purchased as well. So without further ado, let's get into book number one. So this first book is a book that I am so excited to share with you. It's a book that's just right up my alley. I tend to always gravitate towards this genre, which is a thriller. Um, the front cover of the book it just is really eye-catching, so that's really what stopped me dead in my tracks to pick it up. But the quote on the front by Stephen King, hypnotic and scary, totally original. Now that's what really impressed me because, you know, whether or not you like Stephen King novels or Stephen King himself, um, you have to admit, the guy knows what he's doing. I mean, he has crafted so many short stories and novels since the 70s, I believe. Um, so you kind of have to have some respect for the guy. And if he's going to give a quote on something, um, then he's taking the time out of his day to do that. So I don't think he's going to give a false quote if he really doesn't um, genuinely believe that this book is hypnotic and scary, totally original. So yeah, this book is called You by Caroline Kepnes, if that's how you pronounce her name. Um, but yeah, the cover totally drew me in at first. This guy I recognize from the show Gossip Girl. He's kind of got that creepy look to him anyway, um, but he's apparently um, the the character that plays the stalker um, that works in the bookstore and stalks the aspiring young beautiful writer and apparently it says it's now a lifetime series so if you don't want to read the book actually no I'm not going to promote that read the book don't watch the series um, but yeah that's book number one okay so this second book is a little bit more of a serious book I picked it up because I literally saw it everywhere that I went. I went to Books a Million, saw it there, Barnes and Noble, online, Walmart, uh, my local bookstore, and I actually just gave in and purchased the book because I wanted to be in on the conversation too because so many people have been talking about this book. And um, I actually purchased it at Walmart. I know I have a problem even when I'm grocery shopping, I'm thinking about buying books. So I, I picked this up, it's called The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and it's about a young black teenage girl who witnesses the murder of her best friend by the hands of a police officer. So as you know, things like this happen occurring in our society. And it's unfortunate but um, I really think that this could be one of the most important reads of contemporary reading I suppose so I just want to be in on the conversation I want to know you know what's what's going on and what's being said and um, just contribute in a way that I can contribute to the ending of people who see color um, as a, a determinant of someone's, someone's value or someone's intent or anything really. And um, yeah, that's why I picked up this book. So I look forward to reading this. It's a little bit more serious, but 
um, I, I do feel like this could be an important read. The third book that I want to share with you, I've actually already shared with you guys in one of my previous videos. It's a book that I just recently purchased in my local bookstore downtown. And whenever I went to pay for it, the owner was actually just grinning from ear to ear. And he was so ecstatic that I was buying the book from him. And he was telling me how much he enjoyed reading it. So this book is Forever by Pete Hamill. And this book is about a man who is granted immortality as long as he never leaves the island of Manhattan. So we get to witness, you know, how New York City became a city from a little town and we get to live the life of an immortal and how he grows to love people and then he must bury them how he goes grow, goes through a war and just all kinds of things and I just feel like this is going to be a really neat read it's going to be um, a different perspective a perspective that I have never actually read before. I don't think I've read a book um, that dealt with immortality in the characters. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this. I'll zoom in closer so you can see how beautiful the cover is. Um, but yeah, that is book number three. All right, so we are on book number four. This book I just picked up a week ago, I think, in Books A Million. I didn't pick it out. It was a book that uh, my friend found and he approached me with it. It was like, hey, I really think that you should get this book. Um, I really enjoyed it and I think you're going to really love them. And so naturally I said, sure, let's do this. So the fourth book will be Killing Floor by Lee Child. If you are familiar with the Jack Reacher novels or the movies. Um, this is actually the first book in that series. And basically the main character is an ex-military policeman and he has been framed for murder. So this is um, highly action-packed. It's a thriller. Um, it's military and I'm pretty excited to read it to say the least. So yeah, that is book number four. All right, so we are on to book number five, but I'm going to go ahead and add in book number six with it because they go together. So I mentioned in one of my previous videos, or maybe it was on my bookstagram, but I had read this book, The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. Um, I read this a year and a half or two years ago, and I kept telling myself that I wanted to get um, book two and three of the series and I just sat it on my bookshelf completely forgot about it until I was in BAM the other day and found them so I had to get them I had to get them guys so this is book two and this is book three book two is the retribution and book three is the evolution of Mara Dyer this is essentially the the first book it opens with Mara in a hospital room. She doesn't really remember much, but um, she's been involved in a horrible accident and some of her friends have actually died. And throughout the book, there's just a series of strange happenings with Mara and her visions and, and dreams and things like that. It's also a romance novel too. She meets this boy and they are just um, instantly attracted to each other like magnets. So yeah, I'm excited to read um, the next two books of that uh, thriller trilogy, paranormal trilogy, whatever you would call it. But yeah, I did it. I bought the two books finally. Book number seven was a book that was given to me. I'm just borrowing it. And apparently it's a, it's a major motion picture, according to the cover of the book. And basically, um, it's a military book, and I don't typically go for these at all. So I'm trying to get um, more well-rounded with my reading. But um, yeah, this book is basically about, it's a journalist that follows soldiers 
back home from war um, and kind of documents how they kind of reimmerse themselves into normal civilian life and um, what happens when they go home to their families and, and jobs and all things like that. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about this though because you know when you when you think of someone who has PTSD you think of them as someone who is struggling to deal with the things that they have seen at war or in a different country something that you know we would never have to bear witness to um, but in reality I discovered through another book that I just read that PTSD is usually the result of someone who's struggling to cope with something that they have done. So I, I'm really excited to read this to kind of get a little, uh, to try to immerse myself a little bit more into that life and really come to grow an appreciation, a deeper appreciation for our military and those people who go and they risk their lives to protect our country and to protect everyone in it, our, their loved ones and um, the freedoms that we do have. So without further ado, book number seven will be Thank You for Your Service by David Finkel. Um, and like I mentioned before, it says it's a now a major motion picture and he actually is a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. So yeah, I think this book will be really moving and I, I do believe that it's gonna um, really enlighten myself um, when it comes to service members and what they, what they sacrifice and what they give up, not just in a timely sense, um, they, give, they give up their time and their freedoms, to do other things by um, going to war and protecting us, but also what they give up mentally and emotionally and what they give up in their soul, kind of. So yeah, um, I'm excited to read this to, to become more enlightened. Okay, we are on book number eight. And Patrick, if you're watching, this section is dedicated to you. So. Everyone else that's watching, Patrick is one of my best friends, and Patrick has been hounding me to read this book nonstop for like a month straight. And especially when he realized that I just finished one of my books, he was just texting me every single day, multiple times a day, please read GK, please read GK. So Patrick, I'm finally going to read GK. And if I don't like it, then we're not friends anymore. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm a boy, Anyways, book number eight will be, is it eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Book number eight. I can count. Thank God. Um, Generation Kill. It's another military history book. You guys. Military. I'm just going to read what it says on the back. Just not all of it because some of it's a little inappropriate for um, the audience on YouTube. So the back says they were called a generation without heroes. Then they were called upon to be heroes. Within hours of 9-11, America's war on terror fell to those like the Marines of the 1st Recon Battalion, the first generation dispatched into open-ended combat since Vietnam. They were a new breed of warrior, unrecognizable to their forebears. Soldiers raised on hip hop, blank blank, and <laughs> video games. A dis disparate band of born again Christians, blank Buddhists, and New Agers who glean their precepts from kung fu movies and Oprah Winfrey. Cocky, brave, headstrong, 
wary and mostly unprepared for the physical, emotional, and moral horrors ahead. The 1st Suicide Battalion would spearhead the Blitzkrieg on Iraq and be among the first American combat units baptized in the horrors of Iraq's terrifying guerrilla war. Generation Kill is the funny, frightening, and profane first-hand account of these remarkable men, of the personal toll of victory, and of the randomness, brutality, and camaraderie of a new American war. So yeah, this is a national bestseller. It's also now a seven-part miniseries from HBO, so um, written by Evan Wright. There's some pictures in there. Um, I'm trying to be interested in this, PJ. I really am, but I tell you, this is kind of pushing it. No, I'm excited because he's excited and he really is really pushing me to read this, you guys. And if you have somebody out there that's really pushing you to read a book, you should probably just give it and do it. And um, we've been talking about this actually. I think once I do finish this book, I'm going to bring Patrick on and we're going to just talk about it because. He has military background. He's, you know, he's been deployed several times. He was, he's um, ex-army. So yeah, we're gonna probably just chat on here um, about the book whenever this is done. Book number nine. If you watched one of my previous videos, you will recognize this book. It's another book that I picked up downtown in my local bookstore, and it's a dystopian or an alternate America. It's called Dry by Neil and Jared Shusterman. I think that's dad and son. Um, it could be brothers. I'm pretty sure it's dad and son. I think I read that somewhere. But um, basically, this is about um, climate change and the running out of water. So as you know, we can't survive without water. And um, I think it's just going to be a really interesting read. I think the lead character is a young girl and her parents go missing. They don't return. So her and her brother kind of band up with some neighborhood kids, I think, or just some friends. And they just try to survive and find water. So yeah, I'm really excited for this. I love dystopians. Um, so yeah, that is book number nine nine it's late all right we are on book number 10 and i am inspired by the lot of you guys on youtube and bookstagram um to read this again again yes i've read this before i actually read this in college it is a classic and i am obsessed with it it is the catcher in the rye by jamie salinger I love this character. I love the life uh, moments in the book. I love, um, I love his personality, his coming of age story, and there are a lot of beautiful moments in this book. Actually, um, I actually wrote a paper on this book, and I did mention on my bookstagram that I wanted to purchase a newer version. Um, a, a, with a different cover that I saw on someone's Instagram that um, I could kind of keep in pretty mint condition like I typically do all my books and then kind of hack this one up right in the margins or highlight or underline things um, just annotate you know my initial reactions and questions and um, underline anything that I don't fully understand or want to um, kind of just ponder and think about but yeah, this is um, a reread I'm going to be doing next year because I have been honestly just inspired by so many of you. So many of you love this book and that just makes me so happy because I love this book too. And um, yeah, this one, if you didn't know already, this was actually a banned book and I... I, I want to get more into that. So if you guys know of any banned books that you recommend, just throw them my way, you know. I, I want to get into that. Maybe I'll do like an installment of a, a series of banned books and then just talk about them. I don't know, but you should read banned books because no book should be banned. I repeat, no book should be banned.
Number 11 will be The Tattooist of Auschwitz. This is a book by Heather Morris. And um, initially, I thought this was going to be like a, an, a historical account of what happened from the viewpoint of one person, aka the tattooist. And it is that, but in addition to that, it's also a love story. So I wasn't expecting that, like, like love in the midst of evil and the horror. Um, but I think this could be a really good novel. There's another one out there, I think, The Librarian of Auschwitz, that I'm looking into as well. But I did stumble across this um, just while browsing quickly. I had some time to kill before work. So I, I did pick this up in the store. And uh, basically, the, the guy was forced to tattoo numbers on all the prisoners. And he um, meets with the woman that he falls in love with, I believe. And uh, he, he meets her through, you know, he, he's having to tattoo her. And he resolves to escape or endure the camps and um and live through it and then marry this woman so i i'm really excited for this book um i'll let you know if it's more of a historical account or if it's more of a romance hopefully it's a little bit of both but yeah i'm, I'm really excited for this one number 11 this is a book that i just stumbled across while browsing in bam and it was the only copy left so naturally i had to pick it up and you'll see why very shortly so i live really close to a very small quaint river town and like i'm talking probably three miles up the river is where i live from this town and this is the town Ghosts of Madison, Indiana is book number 11 by Virginia Dyer Jorgensen, I believe. So yeah, this historic um, little town could quite possibly be one of the most um, haunted places, haunted towns in America. So I bought this book because I had this vision. So I keep telling you guys that I'm going to be purchasing a new webcam like within the next few months because I know that it, it's frustrating watching these videos on this poor um, audio and video quality webcam. So um, I, I have this vision, right, that I'm going to be using my new camera and I'm going to be going around and filming probably late at night um, and showing you guys this town because it's so beautiful but it's also kind of creepy especially at night but yes so I have this vision I'm gonna read this book in October because October is all of the fun creepy scary haunted things um, that should be happening in the world is in the month of October so I'm going to be reading this book in October, I'm going to be doing a vlog in October, and I'm going to be doing like this creepy video dedication to this book, to kind of show you exactly what all is in this book. Um, I'm just really excited for this. I'm, just, I'm way too excited that I should be for this right now. Okay, we are on book number 13. I'm so excited. This was my Christmas gift from my friend, and I'm so happy, and I'm so looking forward to reading this in 2019. And that book will be The Black Dahlia Files by Donald H. Wolf. So I became obsessed with this story. Um, it's a true crime story of an actress that was brutally murdered. Um, she was... It's kind of hard to talk about on YouTube because I know that certain people are going to kind of cringe. I'm not going to talk about how she was murdered. If you want to know how she was murdered, do yourself you know, your own service and Google what happened. Um, but yes, this is a true account of a murder of a beautiful young actress. And I think... I think it sparked the Jack Ripper, Jack the Ripper killings. Um, 
So this is the murder that happened prior to, to that. But yes, I'm so excited for this. I love stuff like this. The movie was amazing. Um, it has Scarlett Johansson and a couple, uh, Josh Hartnett, I think that's his name. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, go and watch the movie. It's, it's a really good movie. But um, fun fact, the Dahlia is my favorite flower. I actually have a Dahlia back there that I just purchased from Hobby Lobby. But yeah, this, this was the perfect Christmas gift. Um, my friend knows me all too well. And that will conclude my 2019 um, book list for the year. Thank you for watching my video. I had a lot of fun doing this. And I hope that you found some books in my list that you might want to check out yourself. And if you've also read any of these and want to talk about them or um, comment down below, please do so. And if you'd like to catch a review of one of these books at a future time next year, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, and um, yeah, until my next video, I will catch you guys later. Bye.